The city of Sterling Heights is one of the largest cities in the state of Michigan, but our size doesn't take away from our small community feel. Sterling Heights is safe, innovative, and focused on embracing diversity and building a sense of community. Sterling Heights prides itself on continuing to provide top-notch public services at a low tax rate. From snow plowing, to emergency response, to road construction, living in Sterling Heights means affordable services that impact your everyday. Sterling Heights is home to thousands of businesses, ranging from billion dollar manufacturing to technology operations to small business retail. Here in Sterling Heights, we value each and every one of our businesses that contribute to our bustling economy. Sterling Heights values important partnerships with our schools, neighboring communities, local nonprofits, and businesses. It's these relationships and collaborations that help best serve our residents each and every day. Whether at our library, senior center, nature center, or one of our many public parks, Sterling Heights continues to provide residents with incredible programming opportunities and numerous family-friendly events all close to home. Sterling Heights offers world-class public safety. The men and women who serve in our police, fire, and paramedic units are on call 24-7 to keep our families safe and continue to work to improve and enhance the services that are offered. Sterling Heights residents have a bold vision for the future of our city and will continue to seek new ways to take advantage of existing assets and create new places and spaces for our residents to enjoy. We hope you'll join us here in Sterling Heights where we value a family-friendly, business-friendly, and cultured way of life. This is where you want to be. This is opportunity. This is Sterling Heights. This is Innovating Living. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. What a tremendous crowd, and I am so honored uh, to be here addressing all of you this morning. Welcome to the Macedonian Cultural Center. Before we get started, I'd like to, can we uh, acknowledge the wait staff and all of the management and the people at the Macedonian Cultural Center for the job they've done. I'm so excited to be in this beautiful room, in this venue. They uh, have really rolled out the red carpet for me, so I thank you uh, for, for, your, for your hospitality here. Uh, I want to thank the uh, speakers who came before me. As I said, it's a great honor for me to be here addressing you for our second annual State of the City Address. Uh, I see so many friends and colleagues in the room and um, m many of you who were here with us at this speech last year. So if you'll take a moment, if you were here to remember back, uh, you'll, you'll hopefully remember that I laid out what I thought was a shared vision that we have for Sterling Heights over the coming years and told you about the progress that we would be making together over the next 12 months. Well, what's happened since that time? Two of our council members have left, our police chief has left, a finance and budget director left, and our city development director left. So that wasn't exactly the progress I was, I was thinking about. Joe, is it something that I said? I mean, okay, so maybe we didn't all share that same vision? You know, kidding aside, I think actually what, what is happening, and I'm proud of it, is that because of the progress that we've made over the past several, several years, it's not going unnoticed at the county and around the community and around the region. Um, our public officials, some of our elected officials and some of our uh, city employees have been called on to even greater roles, including our former councilman, Joe Romano, for example, who's with us here. Joe, if you don't mind standing up or at least waving your hand. Joe is now serving as our county commissioner for the city of Sterling Heights. Thank you for being here, Joe. I wanna thank all the public officials who are here and dignitaries who took time out of your busy schedules uh, to be with us this morning. Your leadership and partnership is very important to us. And, and if I could just read through the list that's here, uh, our county executive, Mark Hackle, is here. Thank you, Mark, for your leadership to the county and everything that you do. If we could give him a round of applause. From County Executive's Office, uh, Pam Lavers and Kathy Bartz are here. Thank you, ladies, for everything that you do for our county. Um, I'll read through the list. We have uh, Kyle Pollitt from Sander Levin's office. We have State Representative Henry Yanez, who is here. Kevin Aritt from Senator Gary Peters' office. Uh, Judge Steve Sorowski, who is here. Thank you, Judge. Um, Dr. Christine John, Superintendent of Utica Community Schools. Thank you. Uh, my friend Supervisor Rick Stathicus is here. Thank you, Rick, for being here. And, um, and everyone else who is here today, thank you for what you do. I want to also take a moment to introduce um, my colleagues on the City Council. Um, if I could, our Mayor Pro Tem, Barb Zarko, <laughs> Councilwoman Deanna Koski, Councilwoman Maria Schmidt, 
Councilman Gary Lusk and Councilman Nate Shannon. I say we have the best uh, city council or board in um, the entire state of Michigan and I'm sure a lot of cities and townships in Michigan lay claim to that and maybe their councils and boards are just as good but what I can tell you is that our city council sets the tone for our entire organization and I think for our entire city. Uh, we are professional, hardworking, dedicated and respectful of one another and we're not plagued by some of the things that have uh, have plagued other cities like corruption, disrespect for each other, infighting and distrust. And ultimately the result is that we're able to focus all of our energy on delivering high quality service, high quality services to our constituents and supporting our partners in the business community. And so I'm extremely lucky to be surrounded by this team. And it's not just our city council who leads, it's our city administration and our employees under the direction of our city manager, Mark Vanderpool. Thank you for being here, Mark. Thank you to all of our directors who are here, uh, to our police chiefs and fire chiefs, our firefighters who are police officers who are here. I want a special thank you to the Community Relations Department, uh, Bridget Kozlowski and your team. I really could not have given this speech if it was not for them. So thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's um, worked hard to put this event together and, and make the city the city that it is. Um, I want to also thank the business community that is here and all of our sponsors. The Regional Chamber of Commerce, Melanie Davis, thank you for your leadership. Thank you to everyone who's um, put work in to make this event what it is today. Thank you to Barbara Rossman for your leadership at Henry Ford McComb and everything that you're doing. Um, I'm inspired every time I hear you speak about uh, the leadership that you have in this community and what you're doing uh, for public health. Um, so. I want to thank all of you, and most importantly, I want to thank the residents of Sterling Heights, whether you're here or you're watching at home on Facebook Live. I hope you will get out of this event uh, the sense that the city of Sterling Heights is committed to you, and we're committed to transparency, and we're committed to doing everything we can to make your quality of life better. So here I am today, and I am going to talk to you for the next uh, few minutes or moments about the city of Sterling Heights, which is to say I'm going to talk about three things in particular. I'm going to talk to you about investment, innovation, and progress. Sterling Heights is a city that's undergoing unprecedented investment, innovation, and progress in recent years. And it's apparent from our local businesses and our local economy, to our housing developments, to our city services. Sterling Heights is a city of innovation and progress. I'm going to show you during this speech, I hope, some of the examples of the investment, innovation, and progress going on in, our, in and around our city. And you'll hear about how residents have, uh, you'll hear how the city residents have recently made what I believe is the single greatest investment in our city's history. You'll hear about some of the, the single largest upgrade in fire services in our city's history. But before we get to that, I want to talk to you about the unprecedented in investment, innovation, and progress that the city of Sterling Heights has experienced in its local economy. If you want to see progress, well, let's watch it together. To say that our city is rooted in manufacturing is an understatement. It has powered our very breath, and like the winding Clinton River, it has cut a line through history to bring us to the high-tech world of manufacturing today. It is the foundation of innovating business for tomorrow. Aerospace, automotive, defense. Sterling Heights is the home to companies of all shapes and sizes. Companies like Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, General Dynamics Lion Systems, and Ford Motor Company arrived decades ago and have employed generations of family members. There is a special connection between companies like these and the people of the city. One that combines grit, tenacity, and determination. The people you see picking up kids from school, enjoying music in the park, or shopping at the farmer's market, are those who invent, engineer, and produce top-of-the-line technology. Technology that provides vehicles for families, and vehicles that protect our borders, to making your flight a little smoother and your commute a little safer. From within the city to across the state and around the globe, our impact is mighty. Sterling Heights boasts $30 billion in imports and exports. And when it comes to jobs, 
Our commitment to manufacturing shows in our numbers. We are home to nearly 40,000 jobs, ranging from entry level to expert, hands-on to high tech. In fact, we have over five times as many engineers per capita compared to any other city in the country. Sterling Heights companies are hiring engineers at a faster pace than any other job segment. Our ingenuity bleeds into the community and cultivates the greatest services, products, and opportunities in the world. It is an honor to have our manufacturing legacy and leadership intertwined with our vision of the city. Sterling Heights, we know where we've been, who we are, and we look forward to building our future innovating business. You know, I, I have to say our county executive, Mark Hackle, has set the bar pretty high with uh, the inspi inspirational videos that he's showed at some of his events. Uh, but I'm inspired by that, and I'm very, it, it shows uh, to me how impressed I am with the local businesses, and not just the businesses, but with the workforce that we have here in the city of Sterling Heights. So after years of belt tightening, layoffs, cutting, and, and all the reductions that we saw, we're finally starting to see our local economy come roaring back to life. And Sterling Heights right now is amid, in the middle of an incredible boom in economic development in our manufacturing and retail businesses. And the investment that we've seen in our local economy has led to double-digit increases and residential property value, values throughout Sterling Heights as well. Now, from talking with business owners of all sizes, uh, we know that one of the most pressing needs for businesses right now is for talented people. And if your business needs access to a talented workforce, Sterling Heights workforce is among the most talented in the entire country. As you heard in that video, in Sterling Heights, we are home to more engineers per capita than any other comparable city in the country. Our workforce and manufacturing base are the lifeblood of a local economy that is generating billions of dollars in revenue and economic activity every year and supporting over 133,000 residents in a city with population on the rise, property values are on the rise, median household income is on the rise, and quality of life is on the rise. So Sterling Heights is a city of progress and Sterling Heights is a city of innovation. The impact of our residents and workforce and business is not just felt at home, it's felt th truly throughout the entire world. Drive up and down our industrial corridor and you'll find businesses staff with a dedicated and highly skilled employees and you'll find companies producing innovative products, processes and services that are delivered to customers truly throughout the entire world. Here in Sterling Heights, we're not just leading Macomb County and the state of Michigan in economic development. I believe we are helping lead the resurgence in the national economy as well. Companies like Ford and FCA are making huge investments in Sterling Heights plan continuing Detroit's proud legacy of producing the best vehicles in the world. We are also home uh, to multinational defense contractors that are help produce almost everything that a soldier comes in contact with while defending our country. As we gather here today, just within a few miles of where we are, companies and engineers are developing new ideas, technologies, processes, weapons, and systems that will help keep this country a safe place for our children and our grandchildren for generations to come. And it's all happening right here in the city of Sterling Heights. Whether it's a defense contractor supporting our national defense, multinational corporation, developing technology for the next uh, generation vehicle, it's all happening around our industrial corridor. If you're not familiar, the industrial corridor in Sterling Heights is uh, six square miles between Mound and Van Dyke Road, and it is an economic engine whose roar is, is heard throughout this country. The Sterling Heights Industrial Corridor truly is the beating heart of a local economy whose arteries of roadways stretch out for miles upon miles throughout Macomb County, supporting a network of interwoven businesses whose products and services we rely on every day. Make no mistake, Sterling Heights is a city with a seat at the national table. Pound for pound, I would put Sterling Heights up against any other city in the country. When you look at our workforce, when you look at our businesses, when you look at our defense contractors, when you look at any similar sized city in the country, I can't find any that are having the same impact that we have our, on both the national economy and our national defense. As I said, Sterling Heights is an innovative city and it's a city on the rise. From the depths of the recent national recession, the city of Sterling Heights is now a city with over 65,000 local jobs and home to 133,000 residents, the fourth largest city in the state of Michigan. 
Area businesses and industry generated nearly $6.6 billion in gross product, gross regional product in 2016. And while property values have continued their sharp increase in Sterling Heights, so is population, meaning that we are a very desirable place, outpacing the state, statewide growth by over 500%. Sterling Heights has also seen dramatic increases in median household income. In 2010, the Detroit News, uh, very regrettably, reported that median household income declined in Sterling Heights by more than any other city in the entire country. Today, just seven years later, median household income in Sterling Heights is at $61,828, which is almost $10,000 higher than the state average and almost 10% higher than the national average. I could go on and bore you with more statistics and metrics, but suffice it to say, they all bear out what I think all of us have already felt. Sterling Heights is back, and it's back in a very big way. The growth in our local economy has not only put more money in our pockets, it's led to meaningful impact in our collective net worth. For most people here, I would suspect our single largest investment is our home. In the last five years alone, my house, as an example, has increased in value by over 46%. Most Sterling Heights residents I talk to have had similar experiences. And as the city nears its 50th anniversary next year, in 2018, residential development is not slowing down. As of this month, there are more than 1,500 residential units planned for construction in Sterling Heights, and I'm pretty confident that when we get through those, Sterling Heights is not going to be the fourth largest city in the state of Michigan anymore. We will be the third largest city. Now, it, right now, it's not uncommon at a city council meeting for our city council to approve residential developments for single family houses with starting prices approaching half a million dollars or more. Now, for our, my friend Rick Stathicus, that's, that's really nothing much to be proud of in <laughs> Shelby Township. But in Sterling Heights, we are starting to see high luxury single family residential units going in starting at a half a million dollars. But we know, our, and our developers know, that Sterling Heights is a very diverse city with diverse needs, and we need diverse housing options as well. So some of the unique housing uh, options that are part of those 1,500 under development or soon to be under development include the high-end luxury single-family homes, luxury condominium complexes, but also one- and two-bedroom apartments and a variety of s senior living facilities, including among, uh, among the senior facilities that I think our aging population will absolutely come to love, is the development at uh, the Maple Lane Golf Course by the Mashery family, which is called the Verandas. Uh, as it will be called, the Verandas will be a 55 and older community development featuring over 800 residences, parks, and a state-of-the-art 30,000 square foot clubhouse with a fitness center, indoor, look at that, it, can, you, can you imagine driving up 14 mile, or driving down 14 mile road or driving up Maple Lane at 14 and Hoover and, and seeing that development right there where the golf course is, this is going to be tremendous and I think it's going to be just an absolute gemstone for that, uh, for that region of our city and I can't wait for it. It's going to include indoor and outdoor pools, fitness center, pro shop, retail stores, a full service restaurant and so much more. Not to mention there, there will be a resort class golf course surrounding uh, the property. Uh, maintaining the park-like setting that it has now with mature, beautiful tree lining and, and sparkling new man-made uh, lakes throughout it. So the Mashery family has been a family that's been developing great residential products in Sterling Heights for generations, and they're not the only ones. Developers like them know that they know uh, what an asset Sterling Heights is right now, so they're buying up as much land as they can because they know what a smart investment it is to be here. Don't just take my word for it. Recently, uh, Cranes Detroit reported that the city of Sterling Heights has the fifth highest cumulative property value of any city in the state of Michigan and the highest of any municipality in Macomb County. Sterling Heights' total assessed property value is over $9 billion. Now, that progress that we've made over the past 10 years is remarkable, but believe me when I tell you we are not slowing down. I'm excited to announce that this Monday the city will officially launch the Sterling Innovation District at Sterling Enterprise Park. Sterling Enterprise Park, which is the former Sunnybrook site, is home to auto supplier Mitchell Plastics and will soon be home to hundreds of thousands of square feet of new, innovative manufacturing space. Our industrial corridor is an economic catalyst that supports tens of thousands of jobs throughout the region and whose importance to the state and country really cannot be overstated. It's time that this vital corridor receive the recognition that it's due. 
That's why the city of Sterling Heights will officially brand it as the Sterling Innovation District. The district is comprised of nearly six square miles and 28 million square feet of industrial and high tech space. It's home to giant corporations like General Dynamics Land Systems, BAE, Ford, FCA, KUKA, Key Safety, and many more. The district is not just unique in this region, I believe it is the, an asset that is envied by cities and regions throughout the country. The city of Sterling Heights, as we heard in the video, is home to five times as many engineers as any other city of our size in the entire country. And think about that, folks. Engineers are the designers, the innovators, the creators of new products and processes. They are the ones creating patents and technologies that are improving our everyday lives. And here in Sterling Heights, we have five times more of them than any other comparable city in the country. And that is something that I'm incredibly proud of. Companies are investing in Sterling Heights because they know we have the workforce to help them grow. And with every successful investment into our local economy, there's an even greater multiplier effect. The inf investment spurs on the creation of new jobs, which in turn creates demand, and that demand must be met by more production or investment in new and innovative technologies to meet that demand. Corporate partners, like I, one I want to tell you about, AT&T, are meeting that demand through innovation and investment here in the city of Sterling Heights. Coinciding with the launch of the Sterling Innovation District, AT&T will be celebrating their investment of over $1.5 billion in improved infrastructure in the state of Michigan, including the installation of a high-speed fiber line along our industrial <coughs> corridor. Now, investments like the one by AT&T will help Sterling Heights companies compete globally and it signals confidence that not only is our economy strong, but it is getting stronger and it will continue to grow. That Sterling Innovation District is less than six square miles. That's all it is. But in those six square miles, there are more manufacturing jobs and there's a higher gross regional product than 10 states in our country. The investment, innovation, and progress continues. In recent years, billions of dollars and new high-tech manufacturing investment investments have been made throughout Sterling Innovation District. FCA is leading the way with over $2.5 billion invested in Sterling Heights in recent years, including $1.49 billion invested to modernize the Sterling Heights assembly plant. And I spoke recently with CEO of uh, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, Sergio Marchioni, before that announcement, and he told me that with this investment, the Sterling Heights assembly plant will be one of the most innovative automotive plants in the entire world. That's the plant that's going to be producing the Ram 1500 truck, and I can't wait to see those vehicles rolling off the line. Progress is taking hold in our local economy. Progress is taking hold in our industrial areas, residential areas, and our commercial areas, too. The city's largest commercial center is Lakeside Mall. And it is unquestionably at this time going through a period of transition. But the city of Sterling Heights and our city council and our city administration have been working proactively with the mall's ownership to develop a sustainability plan that will define the future of that vitally important corridor. The Lakeside Mall property, believe it or not, is roughly about the size of downtown Birmingham. And with the proper planning, with targeted investment, and willing partners, imagine what that space could become. Our economic development team, which is headed by my friend, uh, the best economic development advisor, I believe, in the state of Michigan, Luke Bonner, is here. Luke, if you would raise your hand. Luke is working diligently with, these, with the owners and was, is working If you're a business in Sterling Heights, I'm sure you've had interaction with Luke and you can tell just how dedicated he is to our job. And much of the success we have is, is due in part to what he's been doing and he's going to continue to do it. And with Lakeside Mall, I'm confident that he's going to work with them to come up with a great plan. The new owners of Lakeside, who are C3 Asset Management, are receptive to our plans. And I believe we have a shared vision for the mall that will produce a vibrant, and unique shopping district to serve generations of residents. When Lakeside Mall opened up about 40 years ago, uh, it was a destination shopping experience. People came from far ways away to come to Lakeside Mall. With the proper planning and partnerships, I'm confident that Lakeside Mall can reclaim that distinction. You know, much of what we do is geared towards supporting our local economy, and I wanted to start by talking about the resurgence in our local economy because we know that when our economy is strong, our city is strong. We know that when our residents have good and ample employment, they can afford to invest more of their time and money and resources into their community. 
And having a strong community is of vital importance to our economy as well. A business owner will not invest billions or millions or even thousands of dollars into the city, into their business, if the city's not willing to do their part as well. Our, business expect, our businesses expect the city to invest in public roads and infrastructure, public safety, cultural amenities, parks, libraries, and green spaces. Sterling Heights is a city of progress, I believe, precisely because we are making the residents, are making the investments our residents and our businesses demand. That all starts with investing in public safety. I'm proud to report that since the beginning of 2016, we have hired 29 new police officers. We have promoted 37 officers from within our ranks, and we recently promoted a 21-year veteran of the Sterling Heights Police Department, Dale Dwojakowski, as our new police chief. Dale, are you here? If you could, thank you. Stand up. <clears throat> as I said, when Dale was appointed, Dale is a born leader. He is going to take our police department uh, to great places and I'm very excited about his leadership. But his leadership will be put to the test very early as the department experiences unprecedented turnover throughout its ranks. We have new a new chief, new captains, lieutenants, sergeants, and new patrolmen as well. We also have a very new officer, a special new officer I should say, a four-legged officer who goes by the name of Ivy, and I'd like to introduce you to her today. Our new Sterling Heights police officers will be sworn in tonight. But a fifth, a canine officer named Ivy will be the talk of the town once everyone sees her. 7 Action News reporter Matthew Smith is giving us a sneak peek at the first female canine the department has had since the 70s. All right, I'm not just playing with the dog, I'm actually playing with a future member of the Sterling Heights Police Department force. This is Ivy, and she's less than a year away from being on the road. She walks in the room like she's in charge which is good for a police dog. And she is a good listener and she's very smart. I've, I found she's very f smart so far. Officer Steele has high hopes for his newest trainee. After 18 years of working with dogs, this is only the second time he's worked with a dog from the time they were a pup. You can tell a quick squeak grabs her attention now, but soon Ivy will be training with the big dogs. Like, let's hear, the canine she'll one day replace. Well, he's still working good, but he's, he's getting to that the, uh, the retirement age for, for dogs. Blitz is quite the load at nearly 11 years old. Compare that to 12-week-old Ivy and well, she looks like a runt. But don't let her puppy face fool you. Yeah, she gnaws on the leash and looks lovable, but soon she will be the same pound-for-pound -pound force that you're used to seeing. And with months of training at that point, she'll be ready for anything. She'll be a narcotic detector dog and then she'll do tracking of missing people, lost kids, uh, bad guys. Now you can see Ivy here is pretty good at tug of war. I think she's officially beat me. You know, she's doubled in size in just about two weeks and she'll be ready for the road come September. For 7 Action News, I'm Matthew Smith. And now I'd like to welcome Officer Steele and Ivy to come join me if you could. As you can see, Ivy is a uh, beautiful Dutch Shepherd who has been working hard with uh, Officer Steele to learn the ropes around the city and is scheduled to be put into service for our community this November. So uh, why don't we give Officer Steele a big round of applause and thank him. Thank you. Thank you. Ivy joins a department of dedicated men and women who are committed to serving the city of Sterling Heights with uh, distinction, honor, and professionalism. I can tell you uh, the problems that have plagued many cities throughout our country recently, including uh, racial tensions, rioting, civil unrest, police brutality, violence against police officers, have not plagued our city. And I attribute that to a number of factors. I think we have a great uh, resident base. I think we have a great sense of community. And I think we have an exceptionally well-trained police department. And I'm confident that we will continue to set a, an example for other cities and how our police interact with the community. And we're doing that right now with a new program, uh, a unique and interactive program called the CORE program. Sterling Heights PD and Community Relations recently partnered for this new program called CORE, or Community Outreach and Engagement. By using the Sterling Heights PD's existing patrol districts, the collaboration assigns an officer of the six city sections to become that region's advocate. Community policing works 
And uh, our residents know when they see our police officers and they get to know our police officers, uh, they have a better sense of community and they feel safer and more secure in their community. It's also a real deterrent to crime. These officers have a significant presence in the neighborhoods. They, they attend neighborhood meetings. They respond directly to neighborhood concerns. When somebody reaches out to me with a police issue, I give them their contact information and the resident is directly put in contact with their community liaison. This program is helping our police department communicate better with residents in a time when more and more people need to have immediate communication and feedback. I'm proud to have our six core officers here today, so if you wouldn't mind, we'll call your name, stand up, and we'll give them a round of applause afterwards. We have uh, Officer Robert Wojciechowski here. Oh, I'm sorry, child care issues. I've got three kids myself. I'm texting my wife right before, are you coming? So I know how it is. Officer Lamar Kashad is here. <laughs> Officer Ryan Goddard. <laughs> Officer Chris Moreau. <laughs> Officer Dustin Leak. <laughs> and Officer Dustin Donovan Leonard. Thank you for your uh, leadership and for your service to our community. Sterling Heights, this is your team. If you live in the city of Sterling Heights, your place of business is in the city of Sterling Heights, one of these offices is, is your direct contact to the Sterling Heights PD. So I'm proud of these men, and I, for one, can tell you I'm happy to have this program and happy to have them working for the city of Sterling Heights. We are investing in our police department because we know it has a direct impact on the progress that we make as a city. The results speak for themselves. Sterling Heights was once again ranked as the safest big city in Michigan and one of the safest in the entire country. Recent FBI crime statistics show that not only is Sterling Heights the safest big city in Michigan, but as our population increases, crime is actually falling. Safety and security ranks as one of the top re reasons that residents find Sterling Heights to be a desirable community. But safety doesn't just mean protection from criminals and from crime. Our residents want to know that in any emergency situation, our first responders will be there for them. This is why Sterling Heights is proud to maintain the top rated fire department in the state of Michigan. Now I'm sure, like I said before on another topic, a lot of cities lay claim that they've got the best this or they've got the best that. In Sterling Heights, we actually have the proof to back up our claim that our fire department is the best. ISO is a rating agency that rates cities to help insurance companies determine risk. And the lower the city's numerical ISO rating, the better it is. On a scale of 1 to 10, Sterling Heights ranks a 2. There's only one other city in the state of Michigan that ranks a 2, and that's Kalamazoo. There are no cities with a 1 ranking. The men and women of our fire department are well-trained professionals who get the job done. For years, I have advocated that the fire department should be responsible for not just arriving on the scene and not just providing the, the patients with the medical services they need, but also with transporting them to the, to the hospital. So whether you're in a fire or car accident or metal, medical emergency, our fire department, in my, feel, in my opinion, should be transporting you to the hospital as well. I'm, I'm excited to announce that beginning November 1st, the city of Sterling Heights will be providing advanced life support transport services by our fire department. This, The city of Sterling Heights has uh, hired 15 new firefighters and purchased five new ambulances to deliver this cost-neutral service to the, the residents of Sterling Heights. What this means is that whenever there isn't any medical emergency in Sterling Heights, professional firefighters will assist you from the time they arrive on scene until the time you're handed over to the hospital. This program represents, in my opinion, the single largest increase in the level of services provided by our fire department since our city's inception. The program will increase the number of firefighters on duty throughout the city of Sterling Heights every single day. It will double the number of ALS units in four of our five fire stations, and it will provide continuity of care as a member of the FD will be with you or your loved one from the beginning of the run until the care is turned over to the ER staff. The program will also implement a new tiered approach to fire services that I think will help deliver services in a more efficient and effective way. It will reduce the use of larger fire apparatuses to better deploy our resources over our 36 square miles. Whether you're the victim of a car accident or a heart attack, smoke inhalation or stroke, I know that our residents will receive better service from our professional firefighters than ever before. Just a few days ago, I want to tell you about 
an incident that happened in the city of Sterling Heights, where the FDU was dispatched to a house where three children had been accidentally locked in a gun safe. A gun safe was delivered to the house, and the kids were playing around, and one of the kids, I believe, locked the other three kids in the gun safe, along with the combination and the instructions. The parents called 911, and our fire department was dispatched immediately. Inside of the gun safe, the children were suffering from intense heat that was further complicating the rescue. Under intense pressure, our professional firefighters were able to extricate all three children quickly and safely, and they're all here uh, in these pictures to show you their appreciation for our fire department. This doesn't happen by accident. Our fire, professional firefighters train every single day for situations that they could never imagine would actually happen. Examples like this prove that they are the best option for providing emergency care from the moment they arrive on scene all the way to the hospital. I know, <clears throat> I know if my loved one suffered in a medical emergency, there is nowhere in the world that I'd rather them be than the city of Sterling Heights. And I know this also firsthand because uh, the city of Sterling Heights and our fire department recently enacted a program called the Survivor Coin Program. Within the last year, the city of Sterling Heights has distributed eight survivor coins with the ninth to be presented at our city council meeting next week. And that's going to be a very unique one and I hope you'll watch for it. The survivor coin is pre presented to individuals who suffered a medical emergency and whose life was saved by the Sterling Heights first responders. The ceremonies are incredibly emotional events that give the entire care and treatment team from the police, fire, to EMS, ambulance workers, to the ER doctors and nurses, a chance to celebrate a life saved. These stories are a testament to the life-saving work that happens in Sterling Heights by our first responders. For any first responders in attendance today, I want to thank you, congratulate you on behalf of what you do for the city of Sterling Heights. Another way, that, uh, another way that we are investing in our community is through infrastructure improvements. Ask any Michigander what the most important local issue is to them, and I guarantee they're going to tell you, fix our roads. In Sterling Heights, we didn't wait for Lansing to come solve our road problems. We took action ourselves. In 2013, voters approved a dedicated Safe Streets millage to pour more money and resources into our local roads and infrastructure. Because what good is investment by local businesses if customers, suppliers, and employees refuse to travel through the city because of our road conditions? Sterling Heights is committed to fulfilling that safe streets promise, not just by increasing police and fire, but also by increasing investment in our local roads and infrastructure. As of right now, the city of Sterling Heights has 53 local road projects, 10 major road projects going on in the city, totaling over $55 million of investment. Now, I encourage any of you who have questions about our roads and the, the constructions that's going on to visit our city's website and search the Cone Zone to get comprehensive updates on all the construction and costs and estimated completion dates and future projects. So we are fixing our roads. And not only do we fix our roads, but I gotta say, we make them look pretty good. Last year, the, um, the city undertook the complete reconstruction of Dodge Park. If you've driven down, down Dodge Park, you'll, you'll notice that not only is the roadway improved, but we've made major improvements to crosswalks, signaling, pedestrian pathways, and the pedestrian bridge and, and pathway. We also constructed the roadway to have permanent middle turns, acceleration and deceleration lanes, and worked hard with our stakeholders throughout the entire region, the entire area, the neighbors who would be affected by this construction to make sure it was done in the least intrusive way possible. And the city's good work did not go unnoticed. The American Public Works Association has awarded the city of Sterling Heights the project of the year in the category of transportation, five million to 25 million for the complete reconstruction of Dodge Park. Our residents take pride in their houses, our companies take pride in their businesses, and we take pride in our city. You can see it up, in Van, up and down Van Dyke too. Although the construction seemed to drag on forever, now that it is finished, the medians are completed. What a tremendous improvement it is. As you can see from the images behind me, Van Dyke is now a corridor that is visually and aesthetically pleasing to motorists. The medians are beautifully landscaped with unique, distinctive, and impressive mile markers. Just doing the bare minimum is not good enough. It's not good enough for your businesses. 
It's not good enough for us as a city. When traveling through the city, residents should be proud of the condition of our roads and our signals and our signs and our medians. We're going above and beyond to give our residents and businesses the absolute best that we can. You will see it in M when M59 is complete too. You'll see unique and distinctive monument markers signaling the, the importance of this unique and important commercial corridor. Enhanced landscaping and irrigation will not only be appealing to you as you drive through, it will signal to those traveling from out of town that Sterling Heights is a unique and distinctive community that is fully invested in its residents, businesses, and infrastructure. And when we talk about infrastructure in Sterling Heights, we cannot leave out one of the most important stretches of roadway in the entire country, Mound Road. From 696 to Warren and M uh, from 696 and Warren to M59 in Sterling Heights, Mound Road is the backbone of the industrial corridor. Tacom and Tardec, GM Tech Center, local businesses, car dealerships, machine shops, General Dynamics, Global Headquarters, Ford, Chrysler plants, Chartum Gear, Transpac, defense contractors, automotive suppliers, the newspaper plant, residential homes, the list goes on and on and on. It's almost impossible to overstate how important Mound Road is, not just to our local economy, but to our national economy and our national defense. But you would not know that by looking at the condition of the road, would you? We have to do better, and we will do more. Under the leadership of our city manager, Mark Vanderpool, an initiative called Innovate Mound was created to bring together all of the Mound Road stakeholders to rebuild this vitally important roadway. The partnership includes the city of Sterling Heights, city of Warren, Macomb County, rep representatives from the Big Three, and dozens of other businesses up and down Mound Road. With, all, almost 30, with over 37,000 jobs in the corridor alone, and those jobs directly affecting 100,000 other jobs in the region, we have an obligation to do everything we can to improve that roadway. Earlier, the, earlier this year, I traveled to Washington, D.C. with our city manager, Mark Vanderpool, our economic development advisor, Luke Bonner, county executive, Mark Hackle, and representatives from the big three to meet with our federal legislators and tr federal transportation officials to explain to them how important this corridor is, not just to Michigan, but to the entire country. To all of you here who drive Ro Mound Road regularly, I promise you that we will work diligently to secure the $217 million that's needed to completely reconstruct Mound Road. And, we get, and when we get that, and when we complete the reconstruction, I can also promise you that the project will transform Mound into a roadway that doesn't just get you from point A to point B, it will be a transformational project incorporating the future of autonomous mobility and advanced automotive technology into the corridor and roadway itself. It will serve as an example for cities throughout the state of Michigan and country as to how, how we can use our roadways to fully integrate technology, aesthetically pleasing design, pedestrian friendly pathways, and unique and distinctive elements that will support the surrounding businesses and residents. We make these extra investments because we know progress isn't achieved merely by doing the bare minimum. Progress is made by having the foresight to spend our taxpayer dollars wisely and target our investments. We invest in police, we invest in fire, we invest in our roadways, we invest in new technologies as well. I want to acknowledge and tell you how proud I am of the efforts of our DPW in working with a local company, Anderson, Anderson Eckstein Westrick Engineers, who are here, Roy Rose from AEW was here before. Thank you, Roy. Our, our DPW is working with AEW to develop a GIS mapping of all of our city's infrastructure. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look and see. The city of Sterling Heights is working with AEW to conduct a geographic information system, or GIS, survey in the city. AEW is a design firm based in Shelby Township that provides civil engineering, architecture, GIS, consulting, and surveying services to municipal, institutional, and private clients. Over the next few months, AEW personnel will be working around the city to complete this important mapping project that will be a valuable tool for the city's public works, planning, and engineering departments. We're data collecting or GPSing in the locations of all of the catch basins, manholes, uh, of your sanitary system and your storm system and also all of the uh, gate wells and fire hydrants of your water system. Once that data is, is collected in the field, then our uh, GIS technicians in the office 
we'll be connecting the pipes uh, to create a, a comprehensive map of those three systems uh, within the community. Some surveyors are currently taking AW's brand new specially modified bicycles on the inaugural ride to facilitate gathering GIS data points in an urban environment. We've done this similar, similar work in a number of communities, but it's been typically done by, on foot, uh, where we, we take our survey equipment, the surveyors walk to the manhole, they take a reading, and then they walk to the next manhole. They get a, get a bunch of manholes around them, then they pack it in the truck and they go to the next area. Well, one of our surveyors said, you know what, this would be so much better if we were riding a bike. We started doing that uh, this past week, and our production versus the old way is about twice as fast. Uh, so we're collecting twice as much data in the same amount of time. Um, it's a little bit unique, uh, we think, uh, but uh, we, we really think it's gonna help speed up the whole process and, and get the mapping project done for this city in, in much quicker time. The bikes are outfitted with a GPS data collector and receiver, and a device to mark already surveyed data points with marking paint. To help facilitate this project, AEW has also partnered with Johnson & Anderson, another civil engineering firm. J&A vehicles and staff will also be clearly identified. The city provided us with, uh, with hard copy base maps of, of the water, sanitary, and storm system. And I imagine that those maps have been, uh, been around for a long time and been updated periodically. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a comprehensive mapping project like, like we'll be doing in the city. All of these investments have resulted in a city that is on the rise, a city whose progress can be measured and observed. And why do we do this? We do it because we care about improving the quality of life for the residents who make up this community. And what a wonderfully diverse community it is. We have everything from first-generation immigrants and refugees to people whose families have been here for generations. And our diversity is amongst our greatest strengths. If you want to see firsthand how diverse our population is, all you have to do is walk into one of any of our schools. Oftentimes, we as adults segregate ourselves with groups that are similar to us. But the schools are a true melting pot where children are uh, coming together. Children of varying ethnicities and cultures come together to learn together and integrate together. And Sterling Heights is lucky to have great private and public schools that understand what it means to invest in our community. A recent collaboration between the City of Sterling Heights and the Utica Community School District is a great example of our strong partnership with the schools and commitment to increasing educational opportunities. A new program called the Virtual Library Program is geared towards providing access to educational resources for all members of the community. Sterling Heights kicked off the program at the Sterling Heights Library on September 13th. So it's a virtual library card and Utica Community Schools along with Sterling Heights, Shelby, Clinton Macomb and Utica Public Libraries are all working together to provide access to resources digitally. So we're using the student number that the Utica Community Schools gives each student and that will be their virtual library card. So they're able to access e-books, e-audiobooks, digital magazines, music and a service called tutor.com just using their student number. So they don't have to come into the library to actually get a physical library card. They have a library card now. We issued them to all 28,000 students that are in Utica Community Schools and they can access all of our digital resources. This partnership is so needed because it gives all students in our community access to the digital tools that are available for free. Um, if we really want to assist our students in having access to state-of-the-art educational resources, they are right here in the digital library. And I'm so pleased that we are partnering with Sterling Heights Library to provide these resources to all of the students who attend Utica Community Schools. A lot of it is math that we learned when we were younger is not the math that's being taught today. Um, my son, I have two sons, one's in sixth grade, one's in tenth grade, and the sixth grader has a lot of IXL homework. In the past, with my tenth grader, we spent a lot of time arguing because I don't know Common Core. I spent a lot of time on YouTube trying to figure out how to teach things. This is a tool now that both my kids and I can use, we can understand, they can do their homework, there's no fighting, there's no screaming, it's phenomenal. And my oldest son, he has a couple of AP classes, this is perfect for him, it's gearing him 
for how to prepare for college and it's just it's wonderful that we can do it all in our own home. Well as I said today uh, Utica Community Schools and Warren Consolidated Schools are very important to the city of Sterling Heights. Uh, when people are looking for a place to move uh, school districts rank very high on their list so we at the city are looking to partner with the school district any way that we can to uh, provide more access and uh, educational resources to kids and uh, we know that uh, the more we can do for the school district it's the better it is for the entire city so I'm proud to be part of this program and uh, proud to have a great library like we do here in Sterling Heights and think this is a, an excellent addition. Now as a UCS parent myself and that was actually my daughter Clara in the video testing out the virtual library card program I am extremely proud of the work done by Dr. Johns, the UCS administration, the principals, the teachers, and everybody who volunteers, including my wife who's here, Christina, who's the president of our local PTO at Oak Brook Elementary, for the work that they're doing to help educate our young people. Dr. Johns, you're a tireless advocate and your UCS board for our, our school children, and uh, we can't thank you enough for your leadership in the city of Sterling Heights. And Dr. Johns can tell you, and anybody who's a teacher here can tell you, our diverse population includes many students who speak English as a second language. So for them, and for really for every city, or for every resident and child in the city of Sterling Heights, um, free digital access to educational resources, special collections, reference resources, tutoring help uh, through the library is exactly the type of collaboration that they're looking for. Our residents, our parents, and our teachers demand that we do that for our schools and our school districts. And we will continue to work proactively with our schools and with Dr. Johns so that every student in Sterling Heights can reach their potential. I told you I love visiting the schools and I do it whether it's to read to students in March, uh, to take, uh, talk to them about civics or government classes or attend events honoring and recognizing teachers and administrators. It's really where you see how beautifully diverse this city is. Sterling Heights is in fact one of the most culturally diverse cities in the entire state. And that is not just something we say, it's something we celebrate. Every year, the city of Sterling Heights hosts a cultural exchange in the winter, invi inviting residents of all different ethnicities and cultures to come together, gather. It's an opportunity for them to learn about each other, uh, to share, share stories of their upbringing and culture, to break bread and enjoy the delicious food together and grow closer as a community. But in a city as diverse as Sterling Heights, one night a year of celebrating is not enough. That's why this year, the city's Ethnic Community Committee brought back its annual Diversity Distinctions Award Dinner. We celebrated uh, those diversity awards dinner that the, those awards last week, and I have to tell you what an inspiring night it was. Uh, champions of diversity were honored for their influence and commitment in making Sterling Heights a better place for everyone. We were lucky to hear from our guest speaker, Bing Goy, who was recently appointed by uh, Governor Rick Snyder as the director of Michigan's newly created Office for New Americans. Bing's message to the com community was to embrace our differences in diversity, but with a unique twist on that common theme. Bing's message was about embracing diversity. His message was that we need to all be a little bit more selfish in how we approach diversity. Bing pointed out that we should celebrate diversity not because there's something we can do to help improve the lives of those who are different than us. Quite the contrary. We celebrate diversity because of what they can do to enrich our own lives. And isn't that the truth? Our lives are better, richer, and more fulfilling because of the relationships and experiences that we have with people of different backgrounds and cultures. Our lives are better in Sterling Heights when we allow the diversity of our neighborhoods and schools and restaurants, cultural centers and markets to enrich our own lives and experiences. This city's diversity dinner could not have come at a better time as it did this week. Sometimes it seems that our country has lost its mind again. Recent events throughout the country have put a strain on our unity and the 24-hour news cycle seems to only focuses, focus us on the differences that we have rather than the relationships that connect us all. For example, instead of us all coming together last week to hate the NFL because another obscure rule robbed our beloved Detroit Lions of a win, we're divided into camps obsessing over who's standing and who's kneeling. And what are they standing and kneeling for? And we all race to Facebook to express our outrage, either at the president or the protesters. Never once stopping to try to understand what the other person's perspective is. Maybe we shouldn't be offering opinions, and instead maybe we should be asking those who have a different experience than us, and a different experience growing up in this country, what their perspective is. And hopefully they will then ask what our perspective is. 
Events like the cultural exchange and diversity dinner and the dozens of other events that we have throughout the year provide that opportunity for our diverse population to better understand what each other's perspective is. These events are an investment in our community that are leading to the progress that we've made. The city of Sterling Heights wants to be the backdrop. We want to enable those conversations and provide the setting where better cultural understanding takes place. Because I know, and everyone else here knows, that our lives are better, richer, and more fulfilling when we live in a peaceful society, in a society that is fair and just and equitable to every resident regardless of what they look like. The relationships we create with our friends and neighbors who we share this community with is what gives us a sense of connection to place. And the opportunity to make those connections and relationships is what truly makes this a great city. I believe Sterling Heights is a great city to live in, and I believe it's been a great place to live in for almost 50 years. As I said earlier this year, or next year, July 1st, 2018 to be exact, Sterling Heights will officially be celebrating its 50th year as a city. Every year I'm excited for another year of city events, and next year is going to be particularly exciting. Our library director, Tammy Turgeon, community relations director, Bridget Kozlowski, the city's historical commission, and a group of dedicated volunteers are working hard to plan an exciting year of activities, historical video series, and the publication of a new book detailing the city's rich 50-year history. And there's going to be so much more, too. And while we take time next year to look back on the city's last 50 years, we will be actively planting the seeds that will transform our city over the next 50 years. The centerpiece of that plan is the transformational parks and recreation investment that, I, uh, that are already beginning to take shape. In 2016, our residents went all in for Sterling Heights by passing a $45 million dedicated parks and recreation millage that will completely revamp our parks and recreation department. The Recreating Recreation Initiative, as we call it, received support from residents and is starting to come to life. The initiative is about leveraging existing natural resources and assets to create a, sit, to create a city that provides residents with, of all ages with year-round recreational opportunities. The dedicated millage will fund the city's ambitious plan to deliver a diverse mix of recreational opportunities to all of our city's residents. The cornerstone of the voter-approved plan is a 122,000 square foot community center that will be a draw for residents and will provide the space where our community comes together. It will support residents participating in a wide array of cultural and recreational programming, all produced by our Parks and Recreation Department. The first floor of this building will, be, uh, will house three gyms for basketball, volleyball, and pickleball. I never knew what pickleball was, but it looks pretty interesting. There will be a teen room, tot room, outdoor play areas, community room large enough to host events with up to 400 people, and I hope you'll look for construction to start in um, the spring of next year with a completion date in 2019. In addition to that community center, recreating recreation will give the farmer's market a well-deserved permanent home. Yesterday, the city wrapped up its third year of the hugely successful farmer's market. Once again, every Thursday at Dodge Park is where you want to be with thousands of visitors and dozens of happy vendors. The new permanent structure, as you see over my shoulder, will be constructed at Dodge Park, and get this, during the winter, that structure will double as the roof over an outdoor refrigerated ice rink for residents to enjoy outdoor ice skating all winter long. Just a stone's throw away from the farmer's market pavilion will be an outdoor spray ground and splash pad to provide families with a place to relax and cool down all throughout the summer or all throughout the fall if next year is anything like this year, but it does seem like the heat is finally starting to break. And the first new major amenity that will be completed as part of recreating recreation is the city's much anticipated skate park next to the library. Well, we're super excited Recreating Recreation is underway. We have many parks that are being redone. And yes, behind us is a skate park that is well under construction.
Recreational amenities are so important in communities. Studies show that they increase property values uh, with the properties that surround them. Crime is lower around parks that are improved. And most importantly, uh, quality of life is very high around parks that have uh, good amenities. And so this is a new amenity. We've never had a skate park before in Sterling Heights. So we're super excited to get this completed. Just a week or so ago, I talked to a gentleman who was so excited to use the skate park. He wanted to know when it was going to open and was really pleased that he could actually be able to use it this year. And then again today, someone drove up and uh, check on the progress of the park, an adult, and he too was super excited about being able to use the skate park. This park is going to be amazing. Uh, the amount of hills, transitions, everywhere there's a different line to take. It's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited, but I think I want to find a place to work around here just so I can take lunch here. <laughs> as the video shows, excitement for the Recreating Recreation initiative is building as it starts really coming to life. There are so many more things I could talk about too. I'll run through a few of them. Development of a new hike and bike trail linking Joseph Delia Park with the city's nature preserve that will provide uh, cyclists with more area to explore. You probably didn't even know that the city has a 110 acre nature preserve, did you? It's over by uh, Beaumont Troy Hospital and now it'll be just a short ride from Delia Park. The plan also includes a mini soccer field, a dog park, canoe and kayak landings along the Clinton River, Capital, capital improvements to nearly every one of the city's 26 neighborhood parks and five major parks. And for residents looking for an aquatic option, the city has entered into a unique collaboration with the city of Warren, so our Sterling Heights residents will have access to a pool year round. If you drive down Utica Road, I'm sure you've seen some construction dust already. The park officially closed in August and is now under major construction with an anticipated completion date in the spring of 2018. Neighborhood parks have seen vast improvement already, including the installation of new sports courts, playscapes, and trails. And I hope you'll join us on October 17th as we cut the ribbon for the improvements made at Washington Square Park off Stadler Road. Dodge Park is already the cornerstone of everything we do recreationally in the city of Sterling Heights. It's the main entrance to our amazing bike and hike trail system, home to Sterling Fest, the Farmer's Market, Music in the Park, Sterling Christmas, and so much more. And next year, it's only going to get better. I can't tell you how ecstatic I am to watch this project come to fruition. We've seen our local economy come charging back to life because companies are once again investing in businesses, investing in innovative new technologies, and investing in our talent-rich workforce. Sterling Heights has seen our residential housing market rejuvenated because the workforce can once again afford to invest in new and upgraded homes. And we've seen our community come together to celebrate the progress we've made as a result of these invest investments at events year long. Progress is not random and it's not the, it is the result of a vision. It's the result of investment, planning and hard work. Hard work from every stakeholder in the community. From our residents to employees, businesses to city administration and our city council. Our product is the product, our progress is the product of wise investment. Investing in our community, investing in our public safety, investing in our infrastructure. Showing our residents and businesses that we are committed to delivering low cost, high quality services that you can count on every single day of the year. I call on everyone here, whether you're a Sterling Heights resident or not, to help us continue our commitment to progress. Because we cannot do it alone. I, can, I call on all of us to invest some more of our time and our communities and neighborhoods. Let's all invest some of our money in a cause that helps people who do not have the same advantages that we have. Let's all invest our efforts in better understanding the different perspectives of our neighbor. And let us all invest whatever we have and whatever we can to continue on this path of progress together. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for your investment in Sterling Heights. And thank you for being part of the incredible success story that continues to be the city of Sterling Heights. Thank you very much.